So we have two arrays here and I want to do some operations with them. First things first, let's try to compare these two arrays and see if we can get a proper result. To do this, we're going to use memory manipulation and comparison functions, right? These functions that we're going to talk about in this video are all found in string.h or I think also mem.h, right? Because string.h also includes mem.h. And they are as follows. Let's first start with the simplest one, which is mem cmp. Now this one is similar to strcmp, right? It's it's comparing strings, but this guy actually takes in void pointers. It doesn't give you any sort of warning if you actually pass in something else other than a, a character. I talked about void pointers up top if you want to check it out. All right, so we have memcmp and this guy takes two pointers, basically two, let's say, arrays, right? Pointer to arrays that we want to compare, right? We want to compare two places in memory, the, the start of the first array and the start of the second array. So we can pass in R1 and R2. And now the third parameter is actually which or how much do you compare? Like how far do you go? Because it doesn't know by default, right? It can not say size of pointer and just get the size. So in this case, we're going to simply give it, well, it, there are two elements, right? Two and times size of int, right? Because we have int arrays and that's going to give us eight actually in bytes. So we have to give it the size in bytes to this uh, memcmp function. And now let's uh, try to use it. So what does this function actually return? Because remember, we don't have true and false in um, in uh, C. So what does it actually return? Well, it's just a number, right? Simple as that. Basically, whenever this function returns zero, the places in memory that you compare are all the same, right? So we can say if this is zero, then, well, arrays are the same. Otherwise, they are not. So if you try to run this, you'll notice we get the arrays, that arrays are the same. Right, that's nice. We, we got the expected result. Now, what if I change this here? So if I change this to a one, if I run this, well, arrays are not the same. So that's correct, right? We got the result that we wanted. But another change, let's do something different this time. So instead, what if we have a an int array and a short int array? Well, how do we actually use memcmp to compare these two? That's actually pretty simple. First, you still pass in both pointers, but when passing in the size, you have to pass in the size of the smallest array. Don't ever pass in the size of the largest one. Now, to do this, we're just going to say two times size of short int. That's going to be two bytes times two which is the size of this one. This one has eight bytes inside. Now this is going to compare byte by byte. So in the first area, we're, on, we're only going to check the first, well, four bytes of it, because that's how long this memcmp function is going to check, right? This two is going to be completely ignored. So remember that when comparing uh, these types of functions, you usually want to compare them by size first and then with memcmp. Memcmp simply compares byte by byte. But in this case, if we try to run this, you'll notice that the, the arrays are not the same. Well, why? The answer is very simple. The first four bytes in this array is, well, basically zero, 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 and one, right? Because that's how you represent one in four bytes. And then for the second array, so let me, let me, let me uh, write this. So it's gonna be zero, zero, or just zero, 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 and one, right? For the four, for the first four bytes. And in this array, it's going to be something like 0, 1 and 0, 2, because remember, each short int is two bytes only, right? Simple enough. All right, so now the next function, let's say we want, so we have these two arrays, they are different, but we actually want them to be the same. So how can we do this? And how can we copy one on top of the other without doing a for loop? Sure, we can do a for loop and just kind of copy it uh, all together, but using a certain function is going to be much, much faster, right? So if we do this properly, we can say mem copy, right? So that stands for, from, for memory copy. And this guy takes in, again, a void, first two void pointers. So first two places that you want to first, the first is a destination, right? So where do you want to copy this to? So I want to copy this to, let's say in the first array, 
from the second array and how much you want to copy. Well, again, we want to copy the whole array. So to do this, we just say two times size of int. And that's it. And if I try to uh, print whatever we get here, so percent %d and percent %d, let's say, backslash n. And because we've copied on the first array, we're, try to, we're gonna try to print um, the results of the first array, right? Because the second array didn't change. So I'm gonna say r of one of zero and r one of one, and that's it. And if I try to run this, you'll notice that we get one and two, even though we've said here that they are th that three and four. So this is what mem copy. This is what the mem copy function does. It copies the result, the memory from one place into another for how many bytes you want. This is really nice when dealing with arrays. So we have two more functions to go. The first one is very simple and it's called memset. Memset, I'm sure you've heard of it before and you probably used it. What it does is simply sets every single byte in an array to some sort of value. So it's gonna take the place, first the place in memory that you want to set from, right? So I'm gonna say R1 in this case, because why not? And then the value, so I'm gonna say, okay, set everything to zero. I don't care about anything here. And then how much, like how many bytes do you want to set? Well, I'm gonna say two times size of int in this case, because well, we have two ints after all, so yeah. And if I try to print them again, so if I say percent %d and percent %d here, if I run this, you'll notice that both of the values are zero. So we've zeroed the whole array, right? And basically we can do anything here. We can actually set it to one, but that's gonna be a bit tricky because if I run this, you'll notice that we get this creepy number. So what? why do we get these weird numbers? Well, that's simply because instead this mem set, instead of this mem set array saying, okay, well, set every single integer to one, it actually set every single byte to one and each integer is actually four bytes. And uh, the hexadecimal representation of this is, well, let me type it in, it's actually just 01010101 zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one. and for the second number 01010101, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, right? And what printf does is, well, simply takes in this thing and tries to represent it as an integer. And that integer happens to be, well, this one, right? If you try to convert this into a hexadecimal into base 16, you'll notice that we get actually this result. In fact, if I run this like this, you'll notice that all the bytes are one, right? With the hexadecimal representation here. All right, one more to go. If you want to find a certain byte, like just one byte inside your array, you can actually use this function. So you can say memchr, and this is very similar to strchr, which uh, finds a character inside a, inside a string, right? This one finds a byte inside a, well, whatever you give it, basically, inside a place of memory, basically. And this guy takes in simply first the place in memory, then the value that you're trying to find similar to memset, we're not setting it this time, we're just kind of finding it. And what we want is really, well, let's say zero. We wanna find the uh, byte with the value zero. And since these are on four bytes, right? Remember the representation of it in bytes is actually zero, 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 and then a three here. So we should find bytes um, that have the value zero in here. And then we want size of int times two. So that's the, uh, how many bytes it's going to search for. Now, what does this function actually return? Well, that's actually pretty simple. It returns a pointer to the place in memory that it uh, found the byte that you're searching for. And it returns null if you didn't find it. Or if the, array, or if the function didn't find it, right? So if we try to say it doesn't equal to null, right? So if it's not null, that means that it, we actually found the byte. And if it's null, well, we didn't find it, bad luck. So if we try to run this, it's going to say found the byte because we, remember we have zero here, right? Now, what if we want to search for one? Well, you'll notice that this um, array, this, uh, 
base 16 representation of this array is actually 003 and then 0004. So we don't have any byte that has the value 1. If we try to run this, we get did not find the byte. And that's correct because there's no byte with the value 1. But if we try to say array 2, which actually has, has a byte with value 1, if we run this, we'll get found the byte. So that's an overview of many different functions that deal with memory, right? And most likely these are going to be used for arrays, but they can be used for any sort of uh, part in memory you want. Whenever you're compiling, for example, a struct or like multiple structs together, that can be really, really helpful, right? So I hope you got something out of this video and thanks for watching. See you guys next time.